The devil's system and the devil's language and the devil has attacked the words. He's attacked the words. I don't care what nationality you are. You, the, 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 the words of this system are the devil's words. A lot of things that we say, it don't have to be a curse word. It's just against the word of God. I was talking to a, a someone today, uh, well actually last night, and I was telling them that I was believing for something and all they could say is, I doubt it. I doubt that's gonna happen. I doubt this, I doubt that. Why? Because it's been measured out and the facts equal this. So a person uh, who's, who's operating from, from sense realm would agree with them and doubt. That's, that's my point. Of but if we are God's children, we need to be like him. God didn't doubt. He spoke it and he saw it. We need to learn to speak it and see it. But the thing is, later on that night when, when God was uh, out doing something else, he wasn't pulling his, pulling his words that he spoke. See, that's what we, we don't understand because we don't, we don't understand when he said uh, life and death is the power of the tongue. We don't understand when he said words carry spirits. We, 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 we need to understand these things. We need to ask God, God, give us wisdom. He said, you need wisdom? Ask me, I'll give it to you. And he's going to give you wisdom in seed form. Everything God gives us is in seed form. Words are seeds. Yeah, do we believe that words are seeds? I'm going to tell you, remember, um, let's go to Mark chapter 4. That's not on my paper yet, but here we go. The teaching has started. The Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Mark chapter 4. Right? Yeah. All right. Let me find this. Let me find this. Let's look at verse 13. Because what happened is he was telling the parable of the, the seeds, right, to the, to the, to the people, and, the, and the, his own disciples didn't understand. Let's go there. Verse 13, he says, Do you not understand this parable? This is Jesus asking the, the disciples that. How then will you understand all parables? And this, this really hit me now. He said, how will you understand our present? The sower sows what? The, the word. word. Y'all hear that? So the word is a seed. Words are seeds. We plant seeds into the atmosphere all the time. We plant seeds are planted in our heart. The word is our seed. How do I sow seed into the kingdom realm? Words. We are kingdom people. We need to leave, live a kingdom life that we need to really honor and understand our words. God gave us words to, to sow. And the devil has given us a bunch of words to disrupt, to destroy, to kill, steal, and destroy. And when we get mad and frustrated, you know, the key out here, what I'm saying? Yeah. We carry around these bags of seeds. God honors the seed. God wants the seed because God say, hey, I can tell you all day long. We can keep having Bible studies in the Word of God, and it sounds good, and we say, oh, yes, that's good. But guess what? Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. That's what. <laughs> oh boy. 
chapter 12. Hebrew. That's the last one, right? Last chapter, Hebrew. Chapter 12. Let me see. That's where we told to go. Or is it going to be the Facebook? 11. Let me see. It might be in 11. Uh, Okay, here we go. Says, for the word of God is what? Is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. This is God's word. This is what his word does. But I, that's 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 good. But I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Yeah, I'm, I'm near it. I'm near it. I'm near it. Okay, okay, I see that. I'm near it. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. I'm going to start at 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, which is what we're supposed to work to do, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Come short of what? Come short of what? Come short of what? Anybody? Huh? Enter, enter into his rest. Uh, you come short of entering into his rest. Verse 2 says, for indeed, the gospel was preached to us. Okay, so the God has the gospel been preached to you? Okay, now listen to this. The pro gospel was preached to us as well as to them. So a whole lot of people heard it. But the word which they heard did not profit them. God, you hear that? The word of God, it, it didn't profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Y'all hear that? So just because you know the word, heard the word, all that, it's, it's, okay, great. Didn't get mixed with faith. Okay, so God's word, we got God's word, we got the seed, but then the thing that actually makes it go is it, it, this, 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 this thing we need to put on this faith. You see that? It, say, it profit them nothing because what? He tells us why. He says no. He says what? He says, he says it. We only have to try to figure it out. Because of one mixed with faith. It didn't profit them. It did not profit them. So when I'm when I'm when I'm looking at a people, or if I'm a people, and I'm continually hearing the word and I'm in the word, but it's not profiting me, something something not right. Huh? I'm confessing, I'm saying all these things, but it what's profit? Something's not right. What's wrong with it? It's not being mixed with faith. Now, I might say, well, I got faith. I'm mixing it. Okay, so then show us. <laughs> Where is it? Huh? All right. Y'all see that, right? Okay. That's where I wanted to go. Now, let me get back to where we, where we are. Wow. Jesus imitated God in faith. Now, there's faith principles that we're supposed to operate in. Mark 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 verse Verse 23 says, For assuredly I say to you, 
Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, and but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have what? What will he have? Whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, here's this note that I, I want to note. I want to just note this says, now this, this right here, uh, Charles Cap said, and I got it from Creflo Dollar. Said, Charles Cap said this, to tell his people this. So when, you know, I, because I believe uh, we're prophetic and connected to them, I tell y'all this too. But listen to this. He said, God told me to tell my people they can have what they say. Hmm? So I'm telling y'all right now, y'all can have what you say. I can have what I say. And this, this, this was the rest of the statement. He told them, tell them they can have what they say. But he said, but they say what they have. I told them that they could have what they say. Instead, they say what they have. They talk about what's going on, what they have right now. They're talking about this. What's going on? Understand? Instead of saying, hey, I can I can have what I say. Let me just talk to you about what I what I what I have instead. Instead of me calling some things and and, 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 and shaping my life, I'm just gonna talk to you about the way my life is today. You understand? Mm -hmm. What I had. I got this disease. I got that. This wrong. That's wrong. This wrong with me. Blah, blah, blah. Instead of me speaking and understand that God said, I can have what I say. I choose to tell you about what I have. I say what I have. Can y'all hear the difference in that? Yes. That's, that's, that's not right, is it? No. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting duped. I'm getting, re I'm being rebuked. When I was doing this lesson, I sat up and said, man, you need to change your life, bro. Do you have what you say? Or do you say what you have? Do you look out? So are you living by faith and by sight? Listen to that. Hey, from this day on, we can have what we say. When the word comes to us, we can mix it with what? Faith. That's what we can do. We can make it so the word is profit us. Amen? Yes. How you doing back there? You all right? Amen. Now, let's go to Matthew uh, See if I want to go there. Let me go there first. We might not go there. Some of the stuff is just. here, this note was really about unbelief. It said because, I'm going to read this. It's Matthew 17, 20. It says, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, I say to you that if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move and from here to there and it will, it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Now, he was actually talking to his uh, disciples because they couldn't cast out that demon. 
of the little boy because they had been fasting and praying. I believe fasting and praying is very important. I believe guarding our heart now and our mouth with all diligence. I know, have y'all noticed, but for the, like the last week, so I've been talking about us and our words, the way we talk and everything, because God's been priming the pump and sending it this way, and and a whole lot of things have happened in my life right now that I cannot just sit down and talk about what's in my life right now because that's not what I should do. What I should do is take the things in my life and start to arrange them through the words that I say. That's what I need to do right now. See, a lot of us will take the situation that we're in and live that situation and speak that situation out and speak it to a whole lot of people and don't understand that we're actually putting ourselves in more bondage with our words because we keep on talking about the situation. Don't talk about the situation. Most people who know you, know your situation. And if you're a part of a, a, a ministry like this one, we, we, we know a whole lot about you. We know how we should pray for each other. But we need to start helping the other one by speaking positive words and, and faith-filled words, even when they call us and they want to talk negatively. We need to start putting each other in check. Y'all hear, hear me? Yes. So that we can go forward, Amen. prosper. Amen. We've been waiting and believing and hoping and praying and laying hands and everything. We need to start to see what we're saying. Can we see? We see little bits. We want to, but we want to see some things. We want to manifest our life. We want to, what's the song that says? Shift the attitude. Right? That's what we want to do. We want to do that. We, 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 we don't want to settle for life that's been offered to us from this world. This world can't give us the God kind of life. This world can give you a life full of things, but those things can become your prison guards. We don't want that. God said, I make you rich. I add what? No sorrow. <laughs> I make you rich with what? No sorrow. Because you'll understand what the things are for. You'll understand what to do with the things. The things won't have you. They won't possess you. Those things should possess you. Thank you, Jesus. You understand? No, no thing. To possess you. Thank you. I've been bought with a price. Yes. So I know who possessed me. No thing to possess me. All right. It says Jesus spoke to the wind. Of course, people will think you're crazy when you're talking to the wind. <laughs> Jesus spoke to the sea. Jesus spoke to the tree. Jesus spoke to dead people. Jesus spoke to demons. He was showing us what to do. Everything will respond to you. Everything. Whether it has uh, what we perceive life in it or not. It don't matter. It don't have to have ears, but it hear you. When he talked to the tree, the tree heard him and responded. Same thing with us. We need to understand how valuable our words are. Maybe now I understand why I'm saying I'm using the words for the day. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> of my mouth. He says that in the multitude of words, there's sin. What's happening? What? The reason he says that is, is you give yourself more of a chance to say something. That ain't right. When you just running your mouth. We should never let our mouth run without guarding our mouth 
and measured every word that's coming out of our mouths. See, that's what happens when we get angry. When you get angry, you don't care what's coming out. All I know is I'm getting you about me. I'm going to tell you about what I'm looking at, what I'm experiencing right now. It's not faith. You're not speaking your way out of the situation. You're, instead of you saying and can have what you say, you're saying what you have. You're talking about what's going on. I told my wife this morning, me and her, I said, you know, we operate in faith property. We won't never argue. We'll never have an argument. We might not have we might have a disagreement, but it won't be on a on a on the level that it turns to an argument. Screaming and hollering at each other. And it's just throwing words like we don't even care about the words. We don't even care. The words they see, you just it's the blowing seeds out. And then when you see it come up, then what? Now you want to cry and, and, and complain about it. You sowed that seed. You did that. We need to start uh, really measuring. Let's, let's watch our words. Watch our words. In the middle of it, if you get caught up, y'all in the midst of an argument, one of y'all say, hey, that's it, that's it. And start doing something else. Speak in tongues. Start singing. Uh, start speaking some faithful words. The other person may chase you, scream in your ear, and put all that heat in your ear. But you're going to have to resist the devil. And, what, and, and the confession, our health confession, we say that I resist the devil in whatever form he comes in. Mm. Whatever form he comes in. Whether he's trying to come through me, my wife, my children, my husband, my cousin, my boss, my whatever form he comes in. The TV, the radio, the, the internet, whatever form he comes in. We're confessing that, then we give place to him. We have to. <laughs> are you a child of God? That's my question in every instance. And is God pleased with what I'm saying now? And I'm telling you, I started with my thought life first. There's been some things that I've thought that haven't come out this mouth. But I know God still hears them. And I'm like, I need to check that too. So, I, hey, I'm taking a little at a time. Step by step. Step by step. But we can help each other. God tells us, don't, 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 don't present an occasion for your brother and sister to fall. My wife, back then, she's my sister. She's my sister in Christ. We need to understand that. Uh, my granddaughter, that's my sister. I'm her brother in Christ. We need to understand these things for real. We, nobody owns no one. Only he. God owns me. Amen. All right? That's my daughter. Yeah. Because you're not treating her like that's God's property. That might be your daughter. That's your sister in Christ. You better treat her right. No, we got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot, we got a lot to do. Okay. Oh, yeah. I said Jesus spoke to the wind, the sea, the tree, the dead man, the demons. But I ain't put this part. And they all obey him. Well, God's showing us all this stuff will obey us. We need to tell him what to do. Continually speak in faith. And I'm going to tell you. I, listen, I like to listen to the faith teachers too. Because the faith teachers say if you haven't believed for uh, say for your, your rent, your rent money, don't be believing for a mansion. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because your faith is not that it's not developed yet to produce the mansion. Produce too much rent. If you can produce one rent, get two. You understand? Present. Let your faith be developed. Stop. Right in the midst of the scripture, it says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. I'm a faith giant now. Why? I heard a message. 
<laughs> I heard a message. So now I'm a faith giant. Oh, Lord. You know, if you keep speaking that you're a faith giant, you will become one. You keep doing the exercise to be that, you will become one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we need to understand where we are and start developing and allowing our faith to grow. I wasn't in the first grade, and then the next day I was in the 12th grade. I didn't understand what they was doing in the second grade. How'd they get to the 12th grade? So we want faith and we want to work it. We want practical application. And I'm telling you, the practical application is watching your words. I, I look forward to the day when people can run down the hall right there saying, I said it, and it happened. <laughs> I said it, I said it, and it happened. No, I said it this way here. Now y'all don't hear me. I said it, and it happened. Thank you. Yes. I said it. Yes. I spoke that thing. Look, look, come outside. Let me tell you. Look, it happened. Yes. And then the next week, here it comes again. What? What? To all of us, that's the way we live. We speak it, and it happens. Yes. And we see it's good. Thank you, Lord. 